Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Muppet. I apologize for the delay today. I was in an extended kind of work meeting and ran over quite a bit. I'm going to split this, what I intended for this video, up into two videos, one for tomorrow, so that, um, yeah, I can just get through this quickly, get to some good stuff since I've made everybody wait too long and, uh, and all of that. What I intended to cover was to review uh, the whole preseason and get into some other things looking forward, but today I'll just review the couple games of the weekend and then give you some information on Ronaldo, on uh, Sesco, probably saying that wrong still, and and on uh, Frankie de Jong, because there's definitely some information here. Talk about Anthony uh, and a few other things with it. I'll get into outs as well tomorrow. I just want to get through everything before, uh, so I can get this video out and, and give you time to watch it for today. So I'll be doing another one tomorrow in the morning, released around the normal time of uh, that, like afternoon. So um, yeah, first, today's video is sponsored by Manscaped. And today we need to talk about taking control of your bush. Uh, whether it's Kate Bush, George Bush, or your bush down there, it's something you just don't want too much of. So taking control of your bush is important. And these products from Manscaped are so good, you're going to be showing pride in your new bush-free yard. It's a fact that you will have the best kept nut sack in the cul-de-sac. And you can save big and be the most hygienic version of yourself by using our discount code MUPPETEERS for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. You know, I, today I'm just going to talk about the uh, Lawnmower 4.0. This is the uh, the latest one, and um, it's excellent. I, I recommend getting this if you're going to get a single product, but I do also recommend getting it in the performance package. Um, this is the main things that comes with it. It uh, can take care of even the toughest bushes, and uh, it's designed to remove grooming accidents. It's designed to shave the hair there on the loose skin. It's got a nice ceramic blade and advanced skin safe technology. A little light you can see there, and um, look, it's going to help. You got to control and tame that bush, no doubt about it. Uh, it's been a, a long few years, and some of us have let at times our bush get a bit more out of control than we want, but it's back to regular life and time to, to keep it in hand. So get the Lawnmower 4.0 if you need help with it, or get the entire performance package. Comes with crop reviver, ball deodorant, all sorts of things I've talked about before. And uh, remember, that's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Use our code MUPPETEERS. It's time to level up from the Amazon to the Amadong. I still don't know what that means. With the ultimate bushwhacking tools from Manscaped. So let's talk about Atletico and reviewing that game. Um, I actually thought it was a very interesting match overall. Uh, finished, obviously, losing 1-0 to a goal from Yao Felix. Personally, I thought United were very good. When you compare it to how we played prior, when you compare it to the rest of preseason, um, when you consider the lack of options and the lack of players who are available at that time for the match. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, um, in terms of the overall game, and, and Eric Ten Hag seems to agree with this, I thought that United created a number of chances. Rashford had some good opportunities early. Uh, there was a pass into Ilanga. He absolutely should have scored. Great opportunity. Another one-on-one. -on -one. We had a little later, not one-on-one, -on -one, but opportunity with Rashford and Palistri, a Maguire free header. I thought there was four or five goals United likely would have scored on another day. Maybe not all, but a couple of them. And the biggest kind of complaint or detraction from the game overall was the uh, effect of two things. Number one is that Atletico played it like a fucking tournament final, dirty, dirty play the way that they always do, and that is what Atletico do. They frustrated. And the simple fact of it was that the referee was not giving fouls and yellows the way that you would in a regular game. Um, you know, so I can pick on, for instance, Anthony Alanga. I thought he had a really poor game. His ball retention was very bad. He kept running it into nowhere. If you put Jaden Sancho where Anthony Alanga was playing, that's a 2 or 3 0 game at halftime. Uh, he just lost possession and wasted so many opportunities. However, at the same time, they should have had two players off on yellow accumulations where they were just 
completely cynical fouls not resulting in yellows if it was a real game they would have gotten yellows and they would have had to play quite a bit differently and a lot of that was on anthony alive he was getting dragged down kicked in the ankles over in the corner every time he'd get by someone and so i felt that you know it was maybe a poor representation of the result and that's why you got to look at the performance and i think that's what tanak said i know he, he was saying he thought it was a good performance obviously not the result but you know, when it really comes down to it, what did Atletico do? Outside of the one moment from Yao Felix, they really did not much else. And United had four or five good opportunities without Jaden Sancho, who's been a huge, huge different maker, difference maker, probably the best player for me in preseason um, for us. Uh, Christian Eriksen came off the bench and was excellent in 10 minutes. If you could imagine him being there the whole game, probably get some more opportunities there and Lissandra Martinez wasn't there yet although uh, I don't think Lindelof was bad or anything like that in terms of the game itself I thought Harry Maguire was a bit of a standout he saved a few goals he's sort of a funny because he's looks a bit clunky and sluggish in certain plays but then would make the recovery he defended well a few one-on-ones his ball passing progressions movements switches of play were very very good I thought he was probably United's best performer um, Tyrone Malaysia was also very good, and I want to talk about that because there's a caveat there. Malaysia was very good, very good, liked how he played. However, he still does not have, and this isn't a slight on him as a player, he still doesn't have the chemistry with Rashford that, San, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Shaw has. And one of the things about both of United's wingers that I think has become very clear, people know this about Jadon Sancho from his time in, uh, in Dortmund, they're both players who really seem to thrive playing with a proper fullback that interacts with them well and goes well with them. Um, that Rashford goal where he, not goal, but play where he passed it off to Shaw, making the overlap in to Sancho to the tap in in the prior game. You don't see those kind of runs yet from Malaysia and Rashford. You don't see that kind of trust, that bond there yet. Um, and that's going to take a bit of time. I think that's a, probably the biggest key to how well we do this season in attack, and especially in breaking down low blocks and things like Atletico putting 11 behind the ball, is building the relationships between the wingers and the fullbacks. Um, that's a big part of Ten Hag's game. It's a big part of getting those overloads and creating those easy goals. And that we still need. But Malaysia is very good, so I think he'll do it. It's not like Alex Tellers where he, he's lacked the ability, the quality to carry the ball, to move the ball, make that happen. So I think that'll be a good partnership in the future. And I thought Rashford was quite good, actually. I think Martial did, you know, a quiet game again, but I think he did very well what he was supposed to. He pro uh, that was the other one. He probably should have scored. He beat he beat him and had a heavy touch, I think, on... You know, he had an open... There's two opportunities for Martial. That's what I was going to say. He was one-on-one -on -one with Oblak, and then he was... Um, he had the other one where he turned him around on a great pass and just lost control slightly or got just slightly out of hand so i think that he had actually a very good game just needs the finishing and that will happen i thought fred was excellent again i know he got sent off it again at the end really don't care uh, about that obviously doesn't matter um, but i thought he was very very good and very effective breaking a play and moving the ball so i had very little comp complaints very few complaints outside of elenga who i think had a really rough game um i thought Scott was invisible. I think he played. I can't remember. Um, I thought we created those a lot of chances and, and probably earned, you know, a, a good result and win. And I think it was still 10 hog ball. It was 60 something percent possession, a lot more passes. You know, they had like one shot on target against us. We had the four or five and, and all those opportunities. Uh, but it also shows how key Jaden Sancho is. But if you take that team, you had Sancho, Erickson, and Martinez. I. <sighs> I can't help it but be optimistic. Um, in the next game on Sunday, I thought uh, Martinez debuted, Erickson debuted as a starter, and I thought M Martinez was very impressive. I think the biggest thing, and I know this is what he's most known for and what Ten Hag signed him for, really, really calm on the ball. I mean, get it, tight spaces, pressure on him really really good control composure moving the ball quickly uh, I thought there was some nice one touch football I thought Erickson was good I thought Donny Van de Beek had a good game not a great game but I think he had a good game one of his better performances I thought Erickson was great he shows his quality really well he's very smart he's very composed he's very sharp 
um, Garnacho super standout. And when I look at it, he's got the physical tools. He's fast. He's strong. He's good on the ball. He's got a little bit of one trick pony type of thing, which is okay for a winger. There's plenty of wingers who've made a career out of this. Gets to the left, cuts inside. He can shoot. He can pass. He can lay it off. But he's good at beating the man, getting by them. He looks physically ready. Uh, I really would like to see him around the first team, you know, being in that rotation spot. Um, Ronaldo was there, obviously. He did a decent job. I don't know. You know, it's tough to judge the interplay with that with fitness. He played one half. Um, Ahmad had a very good game for him. He still physically is just not to the level, and I think that he needs that loan. Um, what else? If there's anything else I could take from it. That's pretty much it. Um, Martinez was, and Eric Erickson stood out in, with their quality, and, and so did Garnacho, and so I really hope he plays. So, you know, that that's what I've, you know, got for, for these games. And I, I'll, like I said, I'm going to do a whole preseason review, talk about things I've heard, talk about results, talk about how I'd rate every single player and all of that later. But for now, um, this is, you know, I just I want to get into it since I uh, was late today to this video. So let's get into transfers because, and again, this tied into better the, the original plan for the video, but I was going to talk about what we need at United, what's obvious. I think everybody knows it. If I were to take two things right now that we need, however, I would say one is very obviously Frank de Jong to add to that deep midfield depth because Fred is the only person who can play in that role right now. And he's probably, again, better playing in that advanced eight position. Um, but good would be a fantastic as a second option in that role. Just if something happens to him, I think he's done an amazing job. I, and everybody knows how I feel about Fred, but I, I think objectively he's done a really good job in preseason. If something happens to him, it's a nightmare scenario. It changes the whole way that United want to play. Um, so that's obvious there. And then the other one is based on this Ronaldo situation is I think a striker is desperately needed. Now, if Ronaldo stays, and let's talk about that. Here's the Ronaldo situation. I'm not going to talk about him walking off, whatever. Here's the reality of it. He wants to leave. He's reiterated to people in the last week he wants to leave. 100%. I'm 100% positive of that. I know for a fact. He also has nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go and the club don't want him to leave. Why? They don't have a replacement. They do not have another thing. So I think he's going to have to stay and I think he's going to have to play. And I think that maybe you could even see a January exit with a striker or another attacker brought in at that time. Let's talk about the na main name that matters that I do have some news on, which is this Sesco striker. There have been many contacts with his representatives. His representative is moving things along, um, trying to get a move earlier than next summer, where um, the conflict is this. They sort of apparently have agreed with Salzburg to stay the other year. That's what they've indicated before. That's what was indicated in other talks, that they were going to stay another year. Now his agent is trying to get him a move early. It is agent-driven, but like many deals are agent-driven. So he wants it to happen. United really like him. Um, the deal on the table is challenging. What I'll say is that there is a reality to, at least it's being pushed or proposed, this loan back, buy and loan back. And I think that that has potential, maybe even an option to end the loan back early in January. You never know. So, but what's, here's what's supposed to happen this week. United are supposed to have some sort of contact with Salzburg, with Red Bull Salzburg, to at least review the deals that are on offer. And I don't know how it'll be reported. I don't know if it's direct. I don't know if it's through the intermediary. But they're supposed to have discussions over the deals that are on the table, the deals that are laid out, or could be laid out and see if there's a viable option to get a deal done now. Whether it's for next year, whether it provides an option to recall them early in January, or whether it's right now. But the most likely scenario still remains that nothing. But in term, if they do sign him, the most likely scenario remains that he stays till next year at the moment. But it would, uh, it would solve a problem ahead of time that I think would be very, very shrewd to do and um, would be something that would make the summer a hell of a lot better to get something like this sorted out nice and early. So that's where Sesco is at. And there are, is supposed to be progression on this this week. They do like him. They're interested. They don't want to spend $55 million, so something like a $30 million with the loan back may be more palatable, but the interest is there and it's real and discussions will occur. 
we'll see where that goes. And if I have an update on that, I'll let you know. But there are supposed to be discussions, contacts, not just with the player agent, but that communicate through to the other club in this case. So it's obviously, you know, not advancing necessarily, but real enough that they're willing to observe what's on the table. Frankie de Jong. Um, I, from what I remember, I said that the dates July 31st through that early August would be very, very key. So what's happened today? Um, in the news, Barcelona have triggered their third lever, which makes people nervous. They don't. They can register all their players. They don't have to sell Frankie de Jong. I think this is why I said last week United are suspicious. They were nervous, suspicious. It's hard to trust Barcelona. And United started having doubts. I wouldn't be surprised if it was because of this lever. But what seems to be happening based on the news is, based on the news that's out there, and then I'll give you the information I've got, uh, where they worried about the lever, but then Barcelona still are trying to pay Frankie off. I think that's the most likely scenario. They want the lever so they can register players, so they can sign others. I don't think they're confident that, they're, that that thing is going to make it a sure thing that they can register everyone. It seems to be questionable. There's no guarantees from what they understand even that La Liga will say, oh yeah, you got this money and now you can register everyone. It may not have an effect on their wages. They still need to move him. He's still not top priority, still not first choice. They've been trying to push it as a, you know, as a sporting thing for the last little while. So, um, you know, basically when it, when it comes down to that, here's what we've heard and what I've got. On Saturday, I was told basically that... Um, you know, United had essentially let Barcelona know or had it been communicated that they were not feeling good about this deal, that maybe they would be looking at some other options. I don't think they really were ever, but maybe looking at some other options or somehow that got through to Barcelona. And then over the weekend, they looked at and had discussions with Frankie de Jong's representative about increasing the offer of paying off his wages to, I think, over 10 million, not all the way, but somewhere. And apparently those discussions are still ongoing right now. But from what I understand, and we had this right last time, remember, we passed this along from our source that they'd offer him about 5 million pounds or something like that. And it came out from good sources, including recently, uh, the times that they'd off, they tried to pay him off with 7 million euros. So um, I'm confident this information is good. You never know how to be reported, but I'm confident this information is good. They have increased their offer to him. I have not heard resolution yet, but they're flying back soon. They have going to have this time off. They have to start registering players. I believe that still, and United are still confident in this, when, despite the third lever, when La Liga answer, they're going to find out they still have to move players, and I think they are expecting it, but it'll look like they've done everything they can, and then they'll pay off the Frankie de Jong or enough of a portion to make the deal palatable. That's what I think is going to happen. That's what United think is going to happen once again following the new developments. It had gone kind of negative, and then a few days later, over the weekend, there were some more discussions. That's what I've heard. That's my information on it, um, and that Barcelona were looking to improve the offer to Frankie de Jong, and it could be moving along now. Um, talking Anthony real quick, um, like I said, I don't see this one happening. I said that before and then it basically got killed as there's no way it's happening at the prices. This deal has been driven by agents, but in a different way than like say Cisco, where yeah, it's driven by agents. Anthony is, the interest from United is still legitimate, but there's been so much over reporting of offers and bids and the price points and all of that, trying to get a deal done from the agents. Um, it's not that United don't want him, they do, uh, and many transfers are driven by agents, but he, his representatives are feeding certain people around football reporting of the situation to try to pressure the club about a deal. Ajax aren't super happy about it, they haven't been. Um, and like I mentioned before, they went and spent 65 million on Martinez. Anthony isn't rated at the level of 80 plus million, or if they needed him more, and they rated him higher or equal to Martinez, then when they went for that deal, why wouldn't they have just offered 70 75 before by Martinez and before the price going even higher? Um, they were trying for 45 50 and I think that's what they valued him at. So that's the information on Anthony and why I still don't expect it to happen, okay? So that's what I've got um, to summarize the new kind of information. Ronaldo is absolutely still asking to leave as of last week, but there's really nowhere for him to go right now. No offers at all brought to the table and United are playing hardball with him on just, he's got to stay. There are talks expected via Sesco to Salzburg to explore the deals on the table. 
and see if there's a workable option. Um, Frank de Jong, Barcelona are looking to improve the offer to him on the payoff of wages, and I might be able to get some updates on that in the next day or two. It looks like some reports are already coming out of Spain changing tune, so we will see. That makes me feel good about this info. So uh, again, thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.